I love that song. That is what you do. You keep on coming through. You know, I, I pray that you wake up in the morning with that song. You know, it, it, some of us, you're stuck in a cycle of a nightmare and you wake up negative. And, and I believe today, God's going to break that cycle of negativity upon your life. And when you have that cycle of negativity, the first thoughts that come to your mind are just bad in the morning. That's the saying, I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And some of us have been waking up on the wrong side of the bed for a really long time. And I got some good news for you. There's another side of the bed. All right? And you can wake up on that side. But it'll come, it all comes with decisions that you're making. And one of the most important decisions that you could ever make in your life um, is, is to receive forgiveness and give it. If you never master this skill of receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life. Uh, there's some of us in this room that you have angry episodes. And, and people know you for having angry episodes. That means you're good, but you're like Mr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like, we don't know who's going to show up to the party. There's little things that set you off. And, but understand, anger, the root of anger is unforgiveness. You haven't forgiven someone. So you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying that. I'm sorry for being rude. I'm sorry for, I'm sorry for hurting your feelings. I'm sorry for having that outburst. I'm, so, I'm sorry for being violent. And you're saying you're sorry, but your sorry doesn't fix you. And you thought your sorrow was going to fix you because you have an internal problem. It's not a mental problem. And you need to get healed emotionally so you can start loving again. See, understand this. Until you start forgiving and be, I mean, receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness, you're stuck in a cycle that you can't break. But today we're going to be talking about this, the, the ultimate reset button. Some of us are going to get a reset today and the ultimate reset button is forgiveness. Come on, forgiving them, forgiving yourself and receiving forgiveness. And then we're going to have a testimony and we're going to be talking about a person that went through the trial of their life, also almost got taken out, um, but they finally received forgiveness they gave forgiveness and they have ultimately been reset. And they're living like the old saying or the new saying, they're living their best life right now. It wasn't in the past. And understand this, if you'll forgive, your best life is not in your past. Your best life is in your future. You need to change your perspective. You'll never have creativity. You'll never have great relationships. You could, you could go from one relationship to the next relationship to the next relationship. But unless you get reset, you're going to have the same exact results. Nothing's going to change until you change. Is that right? Is that right? So let's talk about, I'm going to pray and then we're going to learn. Someone say, we're going to learn. Now you only learn when you understand what's being said. And I'm going to make it very simple. It's not going to be very hard at all. You really learn when you understand what's being said and then you apply it. I, I hear a lot of people, oh, don't preach to me, I know. No, you don't know because you don't do what you said you know. And until you do it, you don't know it. Right now, you'll never get results until you start making up your mind, I'm tired of doing it the way I've been doing it. See, many people want change in their life, but they don't want to change. You're never going to have change in your life, change in your relationship, change in your outcomes. Your results will never change until you change you. Allow God to change you and make up your mind. I'm done being angry. I'm done being upset. I'm done putting all these walls up. I'm done being sarcastic. I'm done being mean. It's over. It starts today. I'm going to receive forgiveness. I'm going to give forgiveness. I'm going to be reset. Come on. Somebody needs to be reset. And that's what's going to happen today if you allow it to happen. This could be the greatest day of your life. Some of you guys don't even know the cycle you're in. And you say, what, what is it? I just seem like it, it just keeps happening. And all of a sudden you'll get like hate just rise up in your life for certain people that remind you of the person that hurts you. And, and, they, and they're still causing emotional dysfunction in your life. And we're going to break that today in the name of Jesus. Okay. Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to study your word. Make your word real to us so we could understand it and apply it to our lives and, and then master it so we could teach it to others and pass it on. So we just thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, before I go into the teaching, we do have membership class today at, at 1 o'clock. Is it 1.30? 
one o'clock, one, one o'clock, it's going to be in the South Hall. South Hall. So I want to make sure if, if this is your home church, I've, this is what's going to happen. When you, get, when you take the next level of commitment, you're saying yes to your next level of development. And you'll never get to success in an area you're not committed to. So it's going to be great. Become, I, I just want to get to know you. I want to know who's part of the family. I want to shake hands with you. Um, I, I, I want to know. I, say, I know this is my home church. Let's make it official. I'll be there and I'd love to see you there. All right? Awesome. So let's talk about the ultimate reset. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the ultimate reset button. Until we forgive those who have hurt us, we will still be under their control. Unable to have healthy relationships, you'll have nightmares, you'll have no creativity. This is what happens when you have unforgiveness. Your creativity to find solutions to problems seems like it's not there. Also, what's going to happen is you're going to become emotionally dysfunctional. Without peace, unhappy, depressed, on a path of self-destruction, demonized, oppressed, and separated from God and his blessings. When Jesus came and he died for our sins, he paid the price for the wrong we've done so that he could forgive us and restore his relationship with us. Without forgiveness, there's no restoration of your relationship with God or your relationship with others. Right now, there's some marriage problems and they're, they're in this room today and it seems like no matter what, it always ends in an argument and you're wondering, we, and you're saying this, we need better communication. But if we don't get to the root of the issue, you don't need better communication. You finally need to forgive what they did to you. And how do you know that you haven't forgiven them? You're still thinking about it. It still hurts you. You keep bringing it up. There's still, there's still anger there. When you finally forgive someone, you're finally free to love the person that hurts you. So let's go talk about three facts about unforgiveness. I want you to get these facts, simple facts. Fact number one. When someone hurts us, we want to pay them back. How many know that's true? When they hurt you, they, that's the old little story with little boys and little girls. They get in trouble for hitting one another. And then the, the little boy says about the other little boy, he hit me first. And many of us right now, you're still living like that. They hit you, you hit them. So it's a natural, it's a natural instinct that when someone hurts you, you want to hurt them back. They cuss you out, you want to cuss them out. They cut you off on a freeway, you want to go crazy. Right? So, but this is what God doesn't advise us. He commands us. He says, never pay evil with more evil. Only in algebra, algebra, the two negatives turn into a positive. When we pay evil with more evil, we just receive more evil. Don't let anyone change the blessing cycle that you're in and turn it into an evil cycle. Now, I just said this because there's a, there's a, there's a formula. When you receive blessing and you give blessing, you receive more blessing. When you receive evil and you give more evil, you receive more evil. All it takes is for someone that's obnoxious, mean-spirited to betray you, to change your cycle. If at the end of your interaction with them, you no longer are blessing people, you're cursing them. Now, once you start giving evil for evil, you just change your future. Because you will reap what you sow. Understand the greatest revenge you could have over an enemy is your success and your blessed life. Don't let them mess up your thinking, mess up your emotions. It, come on, it, it, go, come into your nightmare, I mean your dreams, mess up, mess up your relationships, make up your mind. You could do me evil, I'm going to still give you good blessing. And I'll keep giving you blessing, I'll tell you why. Because I'm not going to let you mess up my own cycle. I'm not going to let you mess up my future life. You're not going to have me start planting wrong seed. So look what it says in Romans 12, 17. It says, never pay back evil with what? With more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. That word evil means injury. Never pay back injury with injury. Harm for harm. It means pain for pain. I'm going to make you feel 
the pain of what you caused me. Don't ever do that. Hate for hate, ill will. How do you know you're paying evil? You're wishing bad on the person. Never wish bad on a person because when you're wishing bad on a person, it's going to come back to you. If you dish it out, if you plant the seed, it's coming back to you. So you have to be careful what you're sending out because what you're sending out, you're planting into your future. It's getting quiet, I know. We got to think, like, wait a second. I'm messing up my own future. They not only hurt me once, they're hurting me for the rest of my life. I better break this cycle and stop paying evil for evil. And do things in such a way that everyone can see that you're honorable. Honorable, excellent in character. See, your character is tested when you run into somebody that's hard to get along with. Anybody could love a loving person. It's difficult to love a difficult person. And some of you guys have that difficult person in your life. Some of you claim to be great Christians until you run into difficult people. But your true character is not revealed with the good people in your life. Your true character is revealed with the difficult people in your life. So let's be honorable. That means let's have some integrity. Let's not just talk about this life. Let's live this life. And it doesn't matter what you dish out to me. You're not going to cause me to change my character, change what I reflect. I am here to reflect the image of God. I'm not going to reflect the devil. I'm not going to reflect you. After a conversation, you might be crazy, but you're not going to make me crazy. You made me angry. You're driving me crazy. That's your choice. The word evil means also poison. Poison. It, it, means, word, it, it, it means accompanied by misfortune, suffering, and curses. Accompanied, so evil is accompanied. So evil has some friends. Misfortune, suffering, and curses. So this is what happens. When, when I give out evil... What comes with evil is misfortune, suffering, and curses. And you're wondering, how come, you're wondering, how come it always ends bad? It always ends bad because you've not pressed your reset button yet. You're still angry at your brother. You're still angry at your sister. You're still angry at your mama. You're still angry at your husband that left you and abused you. You're still angry at the person. And I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is they did abuse you, but don't let them control you for the rest of your life. There has to be a time in your life that you say, yes, they hurt me, and I admit they hurt me, but I'm right now setting a reset button in my life. I'm done with the anger. I'm done with the suffering. I'm done with the misfortune, and I want to reset my life. Life to, so I start entering it into a cycle of blessing. Come on, does anybody want to be happy or do you want to hold on to your hate? So there's two cycles. Receive evil, give evil, receive more evil. That's called the evil cycle. Let's break that today. How about a blessing cycle? You receive blessing, you give blessing, and you get more blessing. So they talk about me, the temptation is for me to slander them. The temptation for me is to go on Facebook and say something really ridiculous about them. They said it to me, I'm going to say it to them. You, you don't, and some of us say this, we're really ghetto. We'll say stuff like this, you don't know who you're messing with. What are you going to do, Christian gangster? There has to be a time in your life that you don't let them control your output. You don't have to receive the evil that they're dishing out. You can say, you know what? I don't receive that. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bless you. Because you're not going to mess up my blessing. You're not going to mess up my future. You're not going to mess up my cycles. You might be cursing me. I'm going to bless you. I bless it. I pray that things go well with you and your children. And you know what you did? You just put a blessing back on your children and on your life. There was an old saying back in the day but when we were little, little kids. And this is what we would say. I'm rubber, you're glue. Whatever you say bounces off of me and it sticks to you. <laughs> you 
You got to bring out that scripture. I know it's not scripture. I know. But you got to bring out that philosophy again. Stop letting that stuff stick to you. Let it bounce right off of you. Give them a blessing. And if they're cursing you, all that's going to land on them is a curse. Don't get wrapped up in it because God will take care of this. You know why, why, you can't, why God can't fix your mess? Because you're too involved fixing your mess. It's not your job to punish them. It's not your job to judge them. It's not your job to pay them back. God says, leave that to me. I'll handle all of that. Your job is just to bless them. Don't forget about your part. Don't try to be me. You be you. And your part is to bless them. My part is to fix everything and put it in order. Amen? So never pay evil for evil and never take revenge. Revenge will always backfire on you. That's why the prisons are full of people that live on this cycle of revenge. Let's leave all the judging to God. When we leave it to God, he'll take care of our enemies. This is all I say when people mess with me. go, oh, I I pray that God gives you mercy. Because you really don't want to mess with God's people. Because they're God's children. And this is what the scripture says. Look what it says. This is crazy. This is crazy. (laughs) Never, dear friends, Romans 12, 19, never take revenge. When? When should we take revenge? When? Never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. He said, leave that to God. That's God's part. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge, I will pay them back, says the Lord. Now you better pray some mercy on these people. You leave with a blessing, you leave with a smile, you leave with your praise, you leave with your joy. You Come on, you leave with your blessing, you leave with a vision, you leave with revelation, you leave, come on, you leave with your prosperity. Don't let them rip you off in that moment. Understand this, there's people that have been testing you almost your whole life and you know who they are. And they'll keep on testing you until you overcome it. They have too much power over you and your emotions. And they're messing up your prosperity. They're messing up your sleep. They're messing up your health. It's messing you up. You need to reset. Now this is what the Bible says we should do. So you never pay evil for evil. You never take revenge. But you always give a blessing for an insult. Look at this. I think the devil thinks that Christians nowadays are weak. That someone just does us a little wrong and we already have attitude. You could be in a service like this and something happens in the children's ministry and you're ready to cuss everybody out over there. Because something happened to your little boy. He got hit by another little boy. I can't believe this church. I'll never come to this church again. They have gangsters in there. You threw away everything you learned in here and going in there with your ghetto self because you've been angry at your mama and now you're taking it out on the children's worker because you, come on, you're angry at your daddy and you're angry at your husband and you're angry at everybody and you're angry at yourself and everywhere you go, even at McDonald's, they take a little time on your men, on your order. You've got ass. Dude. With a wave roll lottery sticker on your car, please. And you forgot. You forgot what you learned. You forgot who you belong to. You forgot you're representing God. And just a little thing gets you out of order. And God is saying, we got to get our emotions in order. We got to get our thoughts in order. We got to get our reactions in order. Because I'm ready to take you to places that you've never been. But if I don't have control of your mouth and I don't have control of your thinking and your reactions, I can't take you there. There has to be a time that we reset and make your reset today. You cuss at me, I bless you. I'm rubber, you're glue. No. (laughs) Amen? Because if I bless you, I'm sowing blessing. So if I sow blessing, I just get more blessing. If I cuss you out, then I'm sowing cussing. 
And you know what comes back to me? Curses. Hmm. First Peter 3, 9, look what it says. Don't pay back evil for evil. Again, it says it. Or insult for insult. That's hard. You can't have, it takes two to argue. If one of you finally make up your mind, I'm not going to, you give me insult, I'm not going to give you an insult, the argument ends. They cuss me out. What do I do? Okay, this is what it says right here. Instead, give blessing in return. Instead what? Blessing. You were called to do this. When was the last time you talked to a Christian and they said, my calling is to bless people? Everybody wants a calling. My calling is to be a prophet. My calling is to be an evangelist. My calling is... My calling is... I have a call and, uh, and it's a big call and, uh, it's a really, really ah, big. I'm called to reach the world. I see audiences of uh, ah, uh, millions. Uh, But you can't control your tongue and you can't control your emotions and you're a baby spiritually. You get all worked up over nothing. But God is saying, I want to mature you and let it start today because you got to accept your first calling. Your first calling is to receive forgiveness, give forgiveness, love people and bless them. Why don't you just go ahead and say, my calling is to bless everyone. You were called to bless everyone, to do this so that you might inherit blessing. Do you see the pattern? You can't inherit blessing if you're not blessing. Now, God is not telling you to give something you didn't receive. God blesses you and then you bless others. God forgives you and then you forgive others. God loves you and then you love others. All God is saying, just pass on what I gave you. Don't pass on what the devil's trying to give you. Amen? So let's go to fact number two. Unforgiveness, this is fact number two. Unforgiveness hurts us more than it hurts them. Unforgiveness hurts us more than it hurts them. Unforgiveness is like taking poison, but expecting it, expecting for someone else to die. Unforgiveness is poison. And if you're taking the poison, they're not going to die. You're going to die. Your joy is going to die. Your peace is going to die. Your prosperity is going to die. It's going to die. And how do you know that you've been poisoned? You know you've been poisoned when you become very critical. You, see, poisonous people are critical and they're complainers. There could be a hundred good things happening and they can't help but focus on the one wrong thing that's happening in the atmosphere. There'll be a hundred people get saved today and the person that's bitter and upset and has unforgiveness in his heart, they'll focus on the one thing that they didn't like. I don't like Pastor Marco's shoes. It was so distracting. Amen? Come on. You become critical. You also become angry all the time, and then you start slipping and slip it, slip cussing. You don't slip praise, you slip cuss. Like, all of a sudden, words are coming out of your mouth that didn't come out, and they're there, and somehow they keep coming out. I'll tell you why they keep coming out. They're still in your heart. Amen? How do you know bitterness is in your heart? Isolation tendency. You start disconnecting yourself from family, healthy relationships, church, ministry, and all mentorship. 
How do you know you have, you have unforgiveness in your heart? You're constantly rehearsing and talking about what happened to you. If you're still talking about what they did and what happened, you have unforgiveness. And understand this, you need to be reset. Because if, you're not, if you don't get reset, you're going to continue being angry. You'll never be able to be happy. You can't have healthy relationships. And understand this, you are welcoming demons in your life. Now, unforgiveness hurts us more than it hurts them. Unforgiveness stops us from being forgiven by God. You cannot have a double standard. You can't say, God, forgive me of everything I do, and then turn it. I will never forgive you. Because this is what God is saying. If you won't forgive them, I won't forgive you. And you know what that means? If you're not forgiven, this is what's happening. You're disconnected and separated from God. You're separated from his peace. You're separated from his instruction. You're separated from his revelation. You're separated from his blessing. You're separated from his joy. The only thing that connects you to God is forgiveness. And anyone can be forgiven. The only one that can be forgiven is the one that refuses to forgive. Are you willing to go to hell for the person that hurts you? Imagine end up in hell, you weren't ever forgiven, and you're there and say, why are you here? Because they hurt me. They're really hurting you now. I know. That was the worst decision I ever made. Tonight, I'm not tonight, today, it's tonight in Africa. That's where I'm at. My heart's still in Africa. No, it's good. Right? Today's the day to reset that. Look at unforgiveness. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 6, 14, it says this. If you forgive others for the wrongs they do to you, your Father in heaven will forgive you. I love that. But if you don't, he won't. Unforgiveness separates us from God. And this is what happens. You can't worship him anymore. So now you're in the presence of God and you almost hate the music. Like, I just can't wait to the word. I just want to get to the word. I hate the music. And you're thinking that you hate the music, but there's a reason you can't connect to God. You can't worship God. And that's an intimate moment with God for you to connect with God. But because of the unforgiveness, you can't worship. It causes you to have a guilt trip on you. You never feel like you're whole, you're right, so is something wrong. You become miserable, powerless. Your prayers become ineffective. And then you're really open to a lot of demonic attacks. One of the, one of the easiest ways to get a demon is by holding on to unforgiveness. And I'll tell you why. Because unforgiveness is agreeing with hell. So understand, when you choose not to forgive... You're choosing not to walk with the Lord and you choose to walk away with the demon. I'm going to be in agreement with you. We're going to hate together. We're going to, we're going to take revenge together. We're going to take that person out of our lives. We're going to talk. We're going to accuse them. We're going to tear them down. Let's go do this. And Satan goes, yes, let's go do this. And I'll add a few demons with me. And we'll add depression. We'll add suicide. We'll add sickness. We'll add mental illness. You don't know how far, uh, how far I'm going to take you. I'm going to take you to a living hell. Unforgiveness. Look what it says here. Unforgiveness disconnects us from God and connects us to the devil. Ephesians 4, 26 this is, it, and 27, it says, If you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudges. I mean, meditating on it, meditating on it, talking about it, meditating on it. I know it's hard if you've been doing this, but I got good news for you. We could reset today and you could say, I'm done with that. I'm, do I'm done living in that nightmare. I'm done then controlling my emotions. I'm, I'm done. I'm done with this. I want to be blessed. I want to have a great future. The addiction is going to be broken off. The torment and spirit of psalm is going to be broken off in the name of Jesus. The, right, joy is my portion. Peace 
peace is my portion. I'm tired of living this way. Yes, they hurt me and I acknowledge it. But today is the end of this cycle. I'm breaking it in the name of Jesus. God has given me some good news. I've been forgiven and now I can forgive and reset my life. You don't need a new marriage. You need a new level of forgiveness. Look, if you are angry, don't sin by nursing your grudge. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Get over it quickly. Get over what? All it's saying is you should never go to sleep with a grudge. And nurse it and just feed it. How are you doing grudge? Are you doing good? You're growing up really, really hateful and big. You want a little more hate milk? <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. Get over it quickly. For when you are angry, you give a mighty foothold to the devil. Now, this is super important for you to know. The word foothold means you give a powerful position for the devil. It means you give a place for the devil. Another room for foothold is a room for the devil. You make a home for the devil. You make a marked off space for the devil. You, 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 you create a place to, for the devil to inhabit. You may give an opportunity to the devil. You give power to the devil. You give a station for the devil to work on. In, and you also give a license to the devil. So he gets a license to build a stronghold in your life. He has a contractor's license. He has a right to be there. You know how many times I've cast out, de tried to cast out a demon and the demon refuses to leave the person? And he said, Pastor, aren't you powerful enough to cast the demon out? And I, 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 when I first started casting out demons, I was confused. No, I was. I was like, in the name of Jesus, I command you to go. And the demon goes, no. <laughs> now I say it louder. In the name. I command you. Lisa, help me. You, me, right now, two voices are better than one. One will chase a thousand. Two will chase ten thousand. Ah! And the demon, I said, go. And the demon said, no. Like, Man, what's going on? So this is what I did. I asked the demon, why aren't you leaving? Like, I did ask him. I was confused. I go, so why aren't you leaving? And the demon answered me. And the demon says, because she has not forgiven her mother. And I go, oh, Okay. So then I got to the, I, I went back to the girl and said, uh, and the demon said, she's mine. I, I don't want to talk to you. I want to talk to, I want to talk to Lacey. Lacey, come here. And then she's coming, oh, she's crying. I go, baby, you have a demon. You know that, right? She goes, yeah, it's scary. I don't want this demon. I go, we know how to get it out. And they say, well, what do we need to do? You need to forgive your mother. What did she do to you? And she says, oh, my mother allowed my father to abuse me. And she took his side. She never took my side. I've been angry with her my whole life. I go, baby, are you ready to forgive your mama? And then she says, oh, okay. And sometimes it would be such a stronghold of unforgiveness and bitterness because there's been a license to build on that life for so long that her personality and that demon have become one. And then I would see her trying to say, just say this, baby, I for forgive. And she would say, I, f f I, f f and she couldn't say, oh, baby, we're here right now. Come on, baby, you could do this. And she says, I forgive my mother. As soon as she said, I forgive my mother, we could go to that demon and we command you now, get out. Do you have a hold? And the demon said, I don't have no more hold. She forgave her mama and that demon would leave. Some of you right now are one forgiveness away from the tormented spirits that have been on your mind, in your family, to be broken once and for all. The demon is going because we're going to revoke the license through forgiveness. And the last fact, forgiveness is a choice. 
It's nothing to do with your emotions. To let, forgiveness means to let it go, to no longer seek payment or payback, to no longer discuss or keep records of wrongs. And it also means to do good to another. It's crazy because when God says forgive them, he just don't say that let them go. He says do something good for them. Bless them. Some of you need to, some of you guys need to buy groceries for your hungry enemy. To break the power over their life, over your life. They're hungry and sometimes God will reveal your enemy in, in, a, in a difficult situation. And God says, let's break it right now. I know you said you forgave them, but let's go ahead and prove it. Do what I do. I bless you. When you were still a sinner, I gave my best for you. I died on the cross for you. Will you go ahead and show them my character? Will you give them a blessing that they don't deserve? That they don't, come on, they don't deserve the forgiveness. They don't deserve the, they don't deserve the, the groceries. They don't deserve the help for the rent. But you're going to do it anyways because you're representing me. And I want to show them my goodness. They've seen enough evil in their life. They won't believe it. That you're going to be good to them. They're going to know that you're changed. They're going to know that God in you. They're going to begin to believe that Jesus is Lord. Some of your enemies, the only person that's going to reach them is you. Okay. We must make a choice to forgive others. In Colossians 3.13 it says, be gentle and ready to forgive. Never hold grudges. Remember, the Lord forgave you. So you must forgive others. The Lord forgave you. So you what? It's not an option. And after we forgive, God forgives us. And we get a reset of God's favor over our lives. And it doesn't start tomorrow. It starts right now. In Job 42.10, Job's enemies dogged him when he was down. Have you ever had someone kick you while you're down? When you were doing good, they used to hang out with you. They used to party with you. But when you hit the bottom, they all betrayed you. And some of them actually kicked you while you were down. That's what happened to Job. And he was in a cycle of loss, cycle of loss, depression, sickness. It didn't break. But then something happened in Job 42.10. When Job prayed for his friends, he prayed for his enemies. The Lord restored his fortunes. Come on, the, the favor was restored. The, come on, the, the prosperity was restored. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. This is what God is saying. What the enemy stole from you through all the years that you've wasted, if you'll just forgive them and let them go, I will not just give you everything that you thought you lost. I'll give it back to you twice as much as you've ever had. I'm going to do something greater than you could ever imagine. It's not just forgiving them. It's receiving the favor and the blessing of God back on your life. Twice the joy. Twice the peace. Twice the revelation. Twice the ministry. Give God some praise. He's a good God. All right. Annette, I have Annette come up here right now and we're going to go through a forgiveness story. Let's give Annette a hand and I'll sit. Here we go. We can move. Let's move that. Thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Did we learn anything already today? I'm telling you, if you learn this lesson, some of you guys are going to be smile for the first time in your life. People are going to say, what happened to you? And you're going to say, I reset my life, homie. No. All right, let's go. And that I'm so glad that you're here and, and you're an ultimate example of a life that's been reset. And it happened through receiving forgiveness and giving forgiveness. But um, let's talk about how you grew up. Tell me, how did you grow up? So I grew up in a household where my mom um, never did drugs. She was the one that supported our family. However, my father was a heroin addict. He was an alcoholic. He was in and out of prison. Um, so I didn't have any foundation growing up other than my mom was a strong woman. Yeah. So your dad was gangbanging yes. on drugs. Was he ever in prison or anything? Yes, in and out of prison my whole life. He was so. in and out of prison your whole life. And um, how did that make you feel? Because, because I, we talked about it. Your mom never left him or anything. She stayed with him. But how did it make you feel about your mom? 
So I had anger and resentment towards my mom because I felt like she would just allow him to come in and out of our lives and just pretty much do whatever. My father, because of his heroin addiction, stole from us. He, he did things. And I, I had a lot of anger and bitterness towards my mom because she loved him and continued to stay with him. And um, so I, I, didn't, okay. I didn't always treat my mom well, this is how <laughs> This is how unforgiveness always works. As soon as you... Um, get into a place of unforgiveness for anybody, um, all the love is going to be gone and it's going to replace with anger, resentment, and bitterness. And you'll start becoming a very negative person, not even want to become negative. And if you're having a problem being positive, maybe you need to go back and look at your mom, dad relationships and look in the past. Now, I'm not saying look in the past for it to control you. Look in the past to see where you got off track. Forgive them, pe those people so you can move on with your life. So let's talk about this. Um, so what was your vision for your life when you were a little girl? So when I was a little girl, I always said, I'm destined for greatness. I'm destined for greatness. I'm going to be great. Not realizing or even knowing what greatness was. But I always had a vision of being great. You were saying that. Okay. Now, as you moved on with life, um, you were in high school right. and you met someone. Who would you meet in high so, school? So um, in high school, I was 16. I met my ex-husband. Um, and we started dating and we ended up getting married. And so I thought that my life was to be a great wife. Um, and then I had children and to be a great mother. Okay. So you want to be great, that, that vision of greatness, you just took yes. it into your marriage. And I'm going to, I'm just going to be a, the best wife ever. I'm going to be right. the best mama I could, I, I could be. But, um, so what was your, what happened that, you said ex-husband, but yes. <laughs> how did he become an ex-husband? What happened there? So um, my ex-husband's in the military. Well, he was in the military at the time. And um, we, we were young. but we, So we got married. I'm, I'm at home taking care of my children. He gets deployed to Hawaii. I'm waiting um, to move to Hawaii. And he... After about a year, my paperwork wasn't going through. He tells me, he calls me and says, I want a divorce. At this point, he has a whole nother family. Um, so he has another child with another woman, and he tells me that he wants a divorce. Now, when you run into these situations, that's ultimate betrayal. She's married to someone. They're building a life together. He goes to Hawaii, and he has this all other secret family that he's building um, behind her back. So everything turned into a big, huge lie. Now, these things will happen, and the Bible says it's impossible for you not to be offended because in this life, there's a lot of opportunities to be offended and angry and hold on to unforgiveness and bitterness. Now, what happens is most of us don't know how to process that. Right. And we just, we just get angry, and when you get angry and you're hurt, you'll, you'll end up self-destructing. So let's see, how did you respond to that, to that moment where he betrayed you, he walked out on you, he had started, you, you found, you, you were completely bombarded with this horrible news. How was your, what was your response? Um, depression. I felt rejected. I felt unwanted. I felt unworthy. Um, so I just started to just become depressed. I wouldn't get up. I was going through the motions. I was still working. I still had to care for my children. But inside I was dying. I was, I was like dead inside. It w I was just depressed. And I remember thinking, can't anybody see like, I'm going through the motions, I'm doing these things, but I'm dead. There was times where I wouldn't even want to wake up. It was just darkness. Okay. And if you're there because of something that really happened to you, you don't need to stay there because she didn't stay there. Something shifted. There was a reset in your life. And today she doesn't have that depression. She right. doesn't have, she's, she's not thinking that way. But this lifestyle began right. to be a downward spiral. Where Correct. did it take you? So because I was so depressed, I started, I met someone who introduced me to drugs. I used to drink every single day. I did meth every day. All because I wanted to feel numb. I didn't want to feel the pain. There was an emptiness inside me that I was just using everything that I could to, um, not feel anything, to become numb. And because of that, um, I got into a lifestyle that I knew absolutely nothing about. I started using drugs every single day, going out, drinking, partying, um, leaving my kids with my mother-in-law, just doing a lot of um, destructive things, hanging out with people uh, that were gangbanging, doing things that, stealing, robbing, just anything we could to get drugs. So she went from not taking drugs, she went straight to meth. 
which is right. crazy, right? Um, it, this, this, it's a downward spiral. What happened to you as a mother? What, so, are, you, are you abandoning your, your relationship right. with your kids too? So at on? this point, obviously, I, I can't care for my kids. I, I get kicked out of my home. Um, I'm living from motel to motel. Finally, it got so bad where I'm in now my car. And I slept one night with my kids in my car, and I realized, you know what? I can't do this to my children. My kids can't live like this. So I asked my ex-mother-in-law if the kids could live with her because that was their stable home. Um, so I gave my kids to my mother-in-law. And at that point, I completely gave up because that was like my final straw. I, I was still a good mom. That was like my final attachment to greatness because I was a great mom. At one point, um, I was even soccer coach. I, so I, I shifted from my husband to my kids. And so when I had to give up my kids, that was the lie that the enemy gave me and told me, what kind of mom doesn't even fight for their kids? Here, here there's CPS cases and... Um, kids get taken, but at least their parents fight for them. You didn't even fight for them. You gave them away. Okay, so now under, understand this. Unless there's a reset, you're thinking, man, I'm at the bottom. But understand there's another bottom. Right. You, you got to be careful that you're thinking that you hit rock bottom and you've not been reset. And only God can reset you through receiving forgiveness and then you forgiving others. Unless you get reset, there's another bottom coming. You would think, this is Lois. She just gave up your kids, but it got lower than that. Now you're on the streets, walking the right. streets, you're homeless, on drugs, and you get arrested for what? Stealing a car. So I stole a car. My first time ever in trouble, I went to prison. Wow. So... Um, because the people that, once I gave up my kids, I completely lost everything. I had absolutely no hope. Like everything was gone. And because of that, I was using, I was doing whatever. I didn't care. Um, I, w I stole the car because I was tired of walking because I was somewhere I didn't know. And I just started walking and um, I, I stole yeah. the car. This is what happens. Your lifestyle, unless you go with the Lord... It's going to take you lower than you ever imagined. Now she's doing a year in prison when it's right. all said and done. She gets out of prison. You think, man, prison is the lowest moment. But you get out of prison, what happens? So I get out of prison and um, I start, immediately start using drugs because when you're in prison, you're broken and you're not getting healed. You're just learning how to, um, you're getting together with other broken people and you're just trading stories on how to do things and how to do things. So it's a vicious cycle that you get into. Um, but because... I told my um, parole officer, hey, I'm still using drugs. He sent me to a program in San Bernardino. Um, however, that program, there was no structure. There was no stability. I was still able to come and go as I pleased. I was still using drugs in the program. And I was on my way to go get drugs, and I ended up seeing my father-in-law, who actually went to the way. So her father-in-law, she sees her father-in-law on your way to take drugs. Yes. And then what, what happens there? What does he do? He tells me, get in his car, and he brings me to the service. So we come to church. <laughs> I hear the gospel, but it's all foreign to me. So I don't even know. I, I, I heard Pastor Marco ask for anybody to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but I didn't because I just didn't know anything. So I'm still in that same cycle. I'm still going, but now it's worse. So now I'm on the streets. I'm homeless. I'm using drugs, and now I'm hearing voices. I'm seeing demons. I don't know what demons are, so I'm thinking that people are trying to kill me. I'm that person that you see on the corner when you leave service that's talking to themselves, that's having a conversation, that's lashing out because I'm so scared of everybody, and, I, and I'm, I'm demonically oppressed. I'm hearing voices. It's, it's you know what's so great? The Bible says people perish for lack of knowledge, and someone right now is in a situation, you're hearing voices, you're struggling for your mental health, and, and there's some good news here that Jesus, the, the Word of God says, i have not given you a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind, that God could heal your mind and God could restore you, or maybe you have family members that are in a condition. Annette's a perfect example because if God could reset her, he Amen. could reset your kids, he could reset your neighbor, Amen. he could reset the guy on the street. Nothing's impossible Amen. with our God. So you got Amen. into the darkest place. So, now let's talk about your restoration. Amen. What happened? How did you turn this? 
How did God turn this thing around so for you? So there was a night I was walking, literally in the midnight hour. I'm walking from Chino to San Bernardino because my whole purpose in life, my vision was that I was going to get to San Bernardino, I was going to check in with my parole officer, and I was going to become homeless in San Bernardino. That was my plan. But I'm so grateful that God had a much better plan. <laughs> so that night... In the midnight hour, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I remembered what Pastor Marco had said, and I said the sinner's prayer, and I accepted Jesus. And I remember I seen a demon um, to, that used to torment me, and I remember telling it, I'm not afraid of you, because if I die today, I know where I'm going. And at that moment, um, I would have never, ever had another tormenting spirit. Immediately, I didn't hear the voices. Immediately, I got restored and restoration in the midnight hour alone on the street. <laughs> wow. So, so now in, you're in the middle. Of, now, now you're taking you, the next morning after you have this conversation yes. with God in the middle of the streets on Mission Boulevard and uh, somewhere yes. in Ontario. You now get on a bus early in the morning, come right. into San Bernardino to go see a parole, parole officer. What happened there? I fell asleep on the bus. And back in um, 2007, we were on the corner of 4th and Arrowhead. But the parole office was on the corner of 5th and Arrowhead. And so I was going to go to the parole, but I fell asleep on the bus, and the last bus stop was right in front of the way. I get off the bus, and my father-in-law is standing right there. I immediately went to him, and I just broke, and I started crying. And he took me to Connie, who is the women's home director. And you went into the women's home. I went into the women's and home. And your life was restored. My life was restored. You started serving in the church. <laughs> I started serving the church. Where are you at right now? Right now I'm the director of the women's home. No, but where are you at spiritually oh, right now? Spiritually She's right the now? director of the women's Good. home. The same home that she went in. We're talking about an ultimate reset. What the devil Amen. meant for harm, God's turning around for good. And God is saying, there's Amen. nothing impossible for me. God is ready to restore Amen. your life. And anything you lost, God's going to give it back to you. Do you have your kids back? Yes. So now I'm at a point where um, I accepted Jesus. But I'm still broken inside because I still have unforgiveness. So I still have unforgiveness in my heart. It, it was easier for me to forgive my ex-husband um, once I accepted Jesus, but it was harder for me to forgive myself. And so God, I used to work in the way out and helping others. God allowed a, a young woman with two young sons. And I get choked up every time I talk about this because... God was so good to me to be able for, for me to have a woman come in broken and me be able to help her before she went into the pattern that I went into. So God allowed me to pretty much help myself after the fact through another person. And that at that moment, I was able to help her. I went up in my secret place and I cried and I cried out to the Lord and I actually forgave myself at that moment. And God allowed me to give me his joy. So once I forgave myself, he gave me the joy of the Lord. Amen? <laughs> yeah. So now, now we're your director of Women's, uh, women's yes. Home. What, what else has God done so, in your life? Tell us the, the... So what's so amazing is that God brought my kids back into my life. I have an amazing relationship with my boys. Um, and my, my youngest son, who's in the military, that's my kids right there, um, I actually am watching my grandchildren right now. <laughs> wow. So now God restored not just my relationship with my kids, but my relationship with my ex-husband's family. I have an amazing relationship. And now whenever anybody needs anything, they're looking to me for help because I'm the one that's able to help them. She, it, she now went from homeless, on crack, ex-con, yeah to a minister in a church, running the, the women's home. She has her own home right, right oh, now. Yes. She has her kids back. Oh. She has, come on, she has her grandchildren. God is saying, when I fix something, <laughs> I completely fix Amen. it. And God is saying right now, whatever, wherever you're at, you're not here to just listen to a good old story. There has to be a time in your life where you say, if that happened to Annette, and that's the same God. That can happen for me. It's not too late for you, for you to get restored. Let's all stand up. Thank you. Let's give Annette a hand for her amazing testimony. We're going to pray. I just asked for two more minutes. This is where we connect with God. There's, there's a few things. Number one, you cannot have a relationship with God and receive Eternal life, a new beginning, a new start, freedom, healing your heart, your mind, your family, and restoration 
without asking Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Now, the reality is heaven is not for a whole bunch of good, good people. Heaven is for a whole bunch of forgiven sinners. You know, all that means is every single one of us have messed up. No one needs to tell you you're a sinner. You already know that. I, I, I don't, I've never met anybody that says, I've never sinned. They all say, yeah, I've lied, I've cheated, I've this, I've that. And there's stuff that you don't even dare confess because it's too embarrassing. But God already knows it all. And, and to think about it, most people will reject you and turn away from you. And God's reaching out to you because he loves you. His mission for your life is not to judge you, to harm you. In the scripture it says this, that Jesus did not come to judge, but he came to save. And that save means I want to make you whole. I want to forgive you. I want to set you free. I want to give you a whole new life. See, apart from Jesus Christ, having a relationship with God through faith in Jesus, you're in a place. Is a place that you're in. There's something missing. And when, you, when there's something missing, you try to self-medicate. The truth is, it's not enough alcohol that you could drink that could numb you enough to cure you. There's not enough girls that you could sleep with or guys you could sleep with. And you could go on midnight stands every, every night and understand one night stands, but understand it's not going to fix you. The hole's just going to get bigger. The crack can't do it. The meth can't do it. The success in your business can't do it. There's something missing. And the only thing that can make you whole, and that's what Jesus said, I've come to give you life in abundance. Or I've come to give you a rich and satisfying life. There's a life that you're looking for. And it can only be found in your relationship with God. You were created to have a relationship with God. Now, what separates you from this relationship with God? Just one thing, your sin. But Jesus already paid the price for every sin you've ever committed. There's not a sin that he won't forgive you of. You could be forgiven today. And once you're forgiven, your relationship with God is restored. You are reset. And some of you right now in this room, you have received forgiveness for and you've forgiven others, but you haven't forgiven yourself. You're like a net. You're holding on to a guilt trip. And understand this. As long as you're holding on to this guilt trip and you're not forgiving yourself, even your prayers are hindered. Not because God doesn't want to answer them. You don't even believe you deserve to be blessed. Because your mind is in a default. I deserve the worst. I'm a guilty sinner. And God says, I'll forgive you. And when God forgives you, he forgets it. You are a brand new person. He washes your slate clean. So there are those in this room. There's one thing you're missing. That's a relationship with God. And until you place your faith in Jesus, you don't have eternal life. Eternal life is not just living forever. Eternal life is a quality of life that begins today. It's the peace of God. It's the joy of God. It's living a life of purpose. Tonight, I mean today, Annette is not depressed. She's happy. If you know Annette, she's always giggling. She's always smiling. That's the way she is. Not that she doesn't have bad days, but overall, this is who Annette is. And that's only because Jesus saved her. He reset her. He made her whole. He made her a new person. So if today you need forgiveness for your sins and you want to place your faith in Jesus Christ and receive a new life, it's the greatest decision you'll ever make. I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand when I say three. If today you need to forgive someone, I got to forgive. I got to reset this. Understand you receive forgiveness and you give forgiveness. You re give, receive forgiveness and you what? Give forgiveness. There might be someone that you're holding on to bitterness and you can feel it in you. As I be began to describe, you, you, man, I've got become negative. I've become a complainer. Who is that person that has your heart, has controlled your emotions, and is causing you to have nightmares? And understand this, as long as you don't forgive, Satan becomes your pastor. He becomes your leader. He takes over your emotions and your decisions. Right now it's time to start over. Today's your day. I need forgiveness and I want to forgive someone. When I say three, I want you to raise your hand. I need forgiveness. I need to forgive someone. When you do that, you're going to be reset today like Job. You're going to be restored like Job. Nine months of turmoil, one prayer gets restored. Today's your day. We're going to get rid. We're going to let that person go. We're not going to meditate on what they did to us. It's not that we're saying what they did was not a big deal. What we're saying is it is a big deal and it really hurt me, but I'm not going to let you hurt me no more. I'm going to let it go for once and for all. I'm ready for my new life. Come on. You can't have a new life unless you let this go. One, I'm ready to surrender my life to Jesus. I want forgiveness. 
Two, I'm ready to forgive. Don't be ashamed. This is the best decision you'll ever make in your life. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. I'm ready to, I see the hand, I see the hand, I see the hand, baby, I see the hand. I'm ready to forgive, I'm ready to be forgiven. I'm ready to forgive, I'm ready to be forgiven. Those that raise their hand, will you give me the privilege of praying with you? Come up real quick, I just want to pray with you. And, and what you're doing is you're literally taking action on this and you're leaving that, come on, you're leaving the unforgiveness, you're leaving the hate, you're leaving the hurt. You're, some of you are going to get healed today because the, the spirit of unforgiveness came with a spirit of illness, of infirmity on your life and we're going to set you free right now. Some of you guys are having nightmares, there's an addiction you can't break, it's going to be broken now in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, Jesus heals, Jesus delivers, Jesus restores, he's the same Jesus. I want to make sure we get everybody covered. Come on up, we're going to pray. Membership class at one o'clock so you can leave and come back at one o'clock. Let's make this official. I'd love to shake your hand. I'll take a picture with you as well. I'd love to see you there. This is your home church. Please make it official. And we'll get you the ID card too. Awesome. Hallelujah. Are we ready? Couples, I, I want to make sure I'm not missing this. You've been upset with each other and you're still upset with each other. Husband, if that's the case, wife, is that your case? Take your husband by the hand, take your wife by the hand, and just come up here real quick. We're going to end this thing right now. You're not going to go in that car with the same anger. You're not going in that car with the, come on, with the, the, the same arguments. It's time to end it right now. Let's go. Let's end it. Let's end it. Freedom in the name of Jesus. I know they hurt you. Freedom in the name of Jesus. Let it go. And when you let it go, you're going to let yourself go. Okay. Do you know there's, there's some sicknesses like cancer, stomach problems. They come in through unforgiveness. And when we forgive, you're making room to be, to be healed and set free from that spirit. Let's get set free in the name of Jesus. Are you guys ready? We're going to do this. You know what we're going to do for the rest of our love, lives? Is love God and love people. A new cycle. Reset today. Let's pray. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. Repeat after me. Say, say Jesus, I thank you for loving me so much that while, while I was a sinner doing life my way, you chose to die and suffer for all my sins. You took my place. All the punishment that should have came to me, you took upon yourself because you loved me so much. Today, I open my heart and I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me now for anger, for my sins, for holding on to unforgiveness, I let it go now. I forgive everyone that hurt me in the past, in the present. I let them go now. And I ask you now, Lord, bless them. And I renounce every spirit that came in through the unforgiveness, spirit of hate. I renounce you now. Spirit of unforgiveness, I renounce you now. Spirit of poverty, I renounce you now. Spirit of sickness, depression, fear, anxiety, mental illness, I renounce it all right now in the name of Jesus. Devil, go in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill me now. Fill my heart with your love. I thank you, Lord. I am forgiven. I am saved. I receive the free gift of eternal life. Today, my life has been reset in the name of Jesus. I will prosper. I thank you, Lord. I have eternal life in the name of Jesus. I thank you. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. We're going to continue praying with you. You want prayer? For, we want to pray with you. 
your next step is membership class at, at 1 o'clock or your next step is Holy Warriors. God bless you, church. Remember online. Remember online. If God's for you, there's no one that can come against you. I know there's people that hurt you. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go for the rest of your life. Live a blessed life. Don't let nobody change your pattern of blessing in your life. You get blessed. You bless.